Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Go ahead, hit the like, hit the share. This video, we're going to talk about today's hearing. We're going to talk about media manipulation. And we're going to talk about due process violations. So go ahead again, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And get ready to share. Grammy Award winner and alleged serial rapist R. Kelly is fighting court cases all over the country. But today, he'll be appearing in his hometown of Chicago to face more than a dozen federal charges. Kelly said for a status hearing this morning where a district court judge will read his new federal charges and more than likely set a new trial date. Kelly is facing 13 counts that include child pornography, child abuse, and sex trafficking with five alleged victims. He's also being charged with obstruction of justice for allegedly paying off and intimidating potential witnesses in his infamous 2008 trial. I spoke with veteran investigative journalist and music critic Jim Derogatis about his long career following Kelly's allegations and telling the stories of his victims. Two out of three women on the south and west sides of this city will have an R. Kelly story. They saw him cruising the high school. They saw him at the Rock and Roll McDonald's. They saw him at the Evergreen Plaza shopping mall. I told a really sharp black young woman producer at one of the TV stations who told me two Kelly stories. I talked to the security guard who buzzed me in to that studio who told me a story. I, I sat and did a panel with Mickey Kendall who told me a story. You know, it is really, that sounds hyperbolic, two out of three women. But it was never a secret. Kelly has been locked up in federal custody just a few blocks from here since July of last year. He was denied bail by New York and Illinois judges, citing witness tampering. R. Kelly has pleaded not guilty to all of the charges against him. Involves four alleged victims. No one matter before the judge in today's hearing involves attorney Michael Evanati, who has been charged with extortion, embezzlement, and wire fraud in an unrelated case. So Jerika Duncan joins me now. Now, uh, from just outside of the courtroom, walk us through what happened today. Because as I understand it, Evanati's interactions with pro prosecutors was partially at the center of some of this stuff. Correct. And let me set the scene for you. This hearing lasted all of six minutes. So R. Kelly, his attorneys, new attorneys, in fact, walked in the courtroom. Uh, he had to go before the judge. They made sure that those lawyers' names were on the record. And then they discussed this motion that you're referring to. And essentially, this is a motion uh, that the defense wants any sort of text messages or communications with prosecutors that took place before these charges against R. Kelly were filed. They're hoping that maybe they would find some sort of impropriety or certain statements or comments made to show that perhaps uh, this was not a case of just simply charging R. Kelly because the prosecutors thought that he committed a crime. So they are still working on that. In fact, the judge asked the defense to repeat a or to submit a supplemental uh, motion to be more specific about what the attorney is trying to gain. If that information is able to be given to them, that again is Avenatti's communication with the prosecutors who've been working on this case. So listen, Jerika, let's like remind everybody about how Michael, Michael Avenatti got involved in this whole thing, because I'm sure many people have been watching him on television ever since he uh, was at the center of uh, the scandal involving the president and his alleged affair with, with a porn star. And then up pops Michael Avenatti with a tape associated with R. Kelly. Yeah, he represents some of the women who are a part of the charges in which R. Kelly's facing. And he's the one who said, you know, I was able to obtain this video. I turned it over to the Cook County Prosecutor's Office. And that video is responsible for one uh, of the charge, not one of the charges, but involving one of the women out of the four in reference to these sexual abuse charges. Uh, so it is sort of ironic because it wasn't necessarily a lane, so to speak, that we would expect him to sort of come into. But he said that he was... Um, given this tape, he saw the tape and he turned it over to the authorities, which then led to some of the charges that R. Kelly is currently facing. And of course, and they're leaving out. He showed the tape to CNN and ain't no telling who else in between.
Now, Michael Avenatti facing his own charges, as we mentioned, completely separate case, not associated with this. But I'm sure, uh, you know, R. Kelly's attorney saw this as an opportunity to maybe find a wedge, maybe, you know, a suggestion that Michael Avenatti's um, reputation is a little bit tainted now as he tries to sort of uh, fight his own legal battles, innocent until proven guilty. Right. And Go ahead. Correct, because he was charged with extortion and embezzlement, but as long as he still has a, a, a you know, law license and he's free, uh, he's going to continue to represent the women that he's been representing in reference to this case. Um, another thing that's interesting to note is not just the criminal case, but you have to remember that R. Kelly's also facing uh, issues in family court. He mm. is allegedly behind on child support once again, so he has to appear in court for that tomorrow. And we're also hearing through one of his new attorneys that that attorney will be fighting a separate case. R. Kelly does not have to be present at that hearing, but the separate case involves a civil suit in which there was a judgment issued for a woman. But now that attorney is fighting on behalf of R. Kelly saying they want to vacate that judgment because he did not know what he was signing or doing at that time. So you have three different things happening between now and Wednesday. Of course, the criminal case which was settled today in terms of what's next. And what's next is a June 26th status hearing to find out if more information will be turned over to the defense. Tomorrow you have the family court hearing. And tomorrow you also have this uh, hearing involving a civil suit where they're trying to vacate the judgment that was awarded to the woman who filed a civil lawsuit against R. Kelly. So a lot that is happening. We are, of course, staying on top of it and we will continue to bring you the very latest. Yeah, we saw all those attorneys. But the government is indicating it may supersede again to add another victim. The 53-year-old Grammy winner said nothing aloud in his appearance before Judge Harry Leinenweber, who has rescheduled Kelly's trial date to October 13th instead of April 27th. Kelly has been behind bars since his arrest last summer on federal charges, including sexual abuse and obstruction of justice. The latest 13-count indictment now includes child pornography charges due to a new accuser referred to as Minor Six. Kelly's attorney seemed miffed by the development. We don't have any information on who this person is. When we get the information, we'll look into it. We're confident in our case. We're confident that Mr. Kelly's going to walk free. In court, prosecutors revealed that a recent search warrant recovered more than 100 electronic devices, including cell phones and iPads. So the government may supersede the indictment again. According to Kelly's attorneys, the raid was at Kelly's storage facility near O'Hare. They claim the equipment is used for concerts and that the government won't uncover anything incriminating. Dozens of our Kelly fans packed the courtroom, many eager to show their support for the embattled singer who they believe will be acquitted as he was in 2008. Though Kelly is facing a number of trials. First up in New York, that is scheduled for this summer. A Cook County trial is scheduled for this fall in September. And for now, the federal case will follow on October 13th. That is the latest from Dirk. So it was reported that Greenberg withdrew his motion for bail. And just thinking about it, you know, from what I was told, you could comment below if you know this to be true or not. But once you submit a motion and if it's denied, you cannot re-enter that same motion. So maybe knowing that these people are anxiously awaiting to lock him up in some jurisdiction, regardless of where. They're going to keep doing this. But I noticed they said that Avenatti was representing at least one of the victims from the indictment. I wonder how that's going to work out. Let's see. Let's talk about each one. Jane Doe number one. Between May 1999 and October 15, 
This allegedly happened in Illinois. Sexual exploitation. So this person would be on the tape, correct? Hmm. Jane Doe number two. In between 2003 and 2004. This happened in Illinois. And the charge is kidnapping. And all the stories we've heard, have we heard this man kidnapped them? Hmm. Jane Doe number three, and or about May 2009 and January 2010. We know this to be the most local one. Jane Doe number four. This happened in July 2015 and also October 2015. Chain doe number five. This was in May 18, 2017. So if you all want to go and just look at the indictment for yourself you can just get on Google type in R Kelly New York indictment and go to the document clown cloud and it's basically one person in question in my mind as far as the Jane Doe's but the rest we already know and we already know it's some bull crap. So at the end of the day, we already know that R. Kelly will be vindicated. And that's why these prosecutors are holding on so tight of these articles of evidence they say they have. You got some people so confidently reading some, some people's indictment. But it looked like to me they need to be reading their own. Because if they're going to charge R. Kelly solely as this enterprise that he has, just think about how some other people will start to look with their multiple LLCs, which you can look up, which have no annual income reported. Why? <laughs> but I digress. Let me get back to the topic. As we clearly saw, there was again more media manipulation. Every time this man has a trial date, we see a lot of shenanigans. We see a lot of buffoonery. We see a lot that goes down. And then we have all these characters leading their little narratives always ready for their interviews. Let's go to Avenatti, for example. It's crazy if you look him up, he started out doing other shady type lawsuits. Like um, I found one where he was suing this um, funeral directory for not burying these bodies properly and moving headstones and etc etc so how does a lawyer that goes from cases such as that jump to this new me too movement 
all these people are connected, which is what people are not recognizing. Just like Michael Avenatti and Gail King. Let's see what old Gail King had to say about Avenatti. They could both carry a show by themselves, to be honest with you, but the two of them together could be very interesting. I I would love to see Michael Avenatti. He's do, he's going to do something. I just don't know yeah. what it is. He, he, he is doing a TV show just yeah. by yes. appearing on other TV shows. He's a rock star, I think. It'll be interesting to see his next chat. Absolutely. According to what this says, this morning co-host Gail King on Thursday phoned over porn star lawyer Michael Avenatti hailing him as a rock star. King, a Democratic donor, tooted the appearance of Avenatti on Wednesday's Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Just interesting how they view different people. Maybe this will make a little sense. Bernie, who's an elected official, you know, is going to be thinking about her, you know, re-election bid, and if she can take down R. Kelly, this will be great for her. What in two thousand eight, the state's attorney went after him, very intensely, right? Fourteen charges of child pornography, and he was acquitted state's attorney who is an elected official, you know, is going to be thinking about her, you know, re-election bid, and if she can take down R. Kelly, this will be great for her. What, in 2008... My last conversation that I had with him in Chicago, you know, he inspired me and told me, Bear, just do what you want, do what makes you happy. He told me to continue to pursue my dreams, pursue whatever I want to pursue. And that's really all that I would be able to do. When you got the so-called victims on record doing stuff like this, I don't understand why this case is still proceeding. And in the media, every time you turn around, they're coming at him as the disgraced R&B singer and giving him such a negative aspect. But then on the flip side, when it comes to any other person, they don't have that treatment. And why? Because again, this is a politically motivated campaign. What does it say when the person that had so much input in getting this indictment has been convicted of extortion? With those um, communications, they say they reclaimed why didn't they keep that energy with getting the communication between Avenatti and Kim Fox? Oh, because maybe just like the prosecutors are doing in withholding some of this evidence, they know it will support R. Kelly's case. The process essentially is based on the concept of fundamental fairness. When you are facing a deprivation of your rights, something kicks in and has to happen in order for those rights to be taken away. If there is a threat to your life, liberty, or property, then something has to happen procedurally before that threat can be actualized. What is this whole new R. Kelly campaign? You got them displaying openly R. Kelly's head severed with this crown on, which could be viewed as hate, yet they can just continuously keep doing this.
they were allowed to isolate his concerts. They were allowed to go on this whole campaign to try to shut down his working career. How is that fair already? You have to be adequately notified of the charges or the proceedings. You have to have an opportunity to be heard at the proceedings. And the person or panel making the final decision over the proceedings must be impartial. That means that they don't lean toward one side or another in regards to the matter before them. This is the reason why if you have a judge who has a conflict of interest in some way, they must recuse themselves and say that they cannot preside over the hearing because of the conflict of interest. What does it say when the lead prosecutor has a conflict of interest and she doesn't recuse herself and in fact goes and, and goes the extra mile with this attorney, Avenatti, to take down a person that she views as a pedophile, as a predator, because she has been sexually assaulted, according to her. The clause also promises that before depriving a citizen of life, liberty, or property, the government must follow fair procedures. In other words, it's not enough for the government just to act in accordance with the law itself. They actually have to follow specific procedures, and if they don't follow those specific procedures, they are denying you the process that is due, and that would be unconstitutional. They would be in violation of the 14th or the 5th Amendment, depending on what type of governmental action you are dealing with. What does it say when the government acts on a fictional book, a scripted real a scripted show, an attorney who is now convicted extortionist, prosecutor who's being investigated. How does this all look? Doesn't seem fair to me. process is due and when. The boundaries of due process aren't fixed. They're constantly changing through case law and we see this uh, really going through a lot of different iterations in the judicial branch uh, in terms of their interpretation and their decision making. The three things though that we mentioned before are things that have always stood out as really being the hallmarks of what has to happen with due process. You Now, as I get ready to close out this video, I just wanted to pinpoint one specific due process violation. And it's talking about public host hostility. I don't know what the heck I was just trying to say. Public hostility towards a defendant that intimidates a jury is, or of course, a classic due process violation making multiple series one-sided series depicting this man as such a monster never once acknowledging the true backstory to each of these individuals they have deemed as a victim all that should go into play and knowing that this is potentially affecting his jury. These people have orchestrated a lie that has been in play for the past three decades, starting with Tiffany Hawkins. And that's actually going to be my next video, connecting Demetrius Smith, Tiffany Hawkins, and Susan Logans. 
But all these people conspired to take down R. Kelly. We watched them go back and forth on the internet with the threats. And we see the shady business practices going on. All you got to do is research all those LLCs that were put out there. And it's very interesting. Angelo Clary, one of the so-called victims, parents, represented by none other, none other than Avenatti, went out and took a LLC using... Tim Savage's daughter, Joycelyn's company's name, J. Savage Collections. This was done September 4th, 2019. That's why they might want to be a little careful as they keep getting on these platforms being so overly concerned with R. Kelly when they claim they have this whole nonprofit organization to focus on. We saw Avenatti a mere few weeks ago taunting R. Kelly's attorney. And look how that played out for him. Media manipulation. They talk a good game for the media. Don't underestimate the source behind some of these stories that we so see reported. It's funny they will use the same characters to drive these narratives in the media. But you don't recognize that they're all covering for the real predators in Hollywood. The predators that people like Corey Feldman have been trying to expose for years. And that's why I feel like R. Kelly is more of a patsy. He's the easy target considering they've had all these years of scandalous tabloids surrounding his name it's so easy to put the focus on him at the same time if you go check out what Corey Feldman is doing right now he's putting together his documentary that he's been claiming he's working on for the last few years exposing the Hollywood pedophiles and that is again why I have no sympathy for some of these parents who would even allow their children to be in certain circumstances when it's been a very it's been a very known fact how things go in Hollywood so to subject your children to this type of lifestyle is beyond me Don't forget to drop your comments. They're always welcome, with respect, of course. The next video I put out, again, will be on Demetrius Smith and Tiffany Hawkins. 